density housing, like you're looking at right now, is becoming an increasingly common way for people to live in places like Nashville, other cities. It's a really smart way for people to have a really nice house, little yard, without having the responsibility of a big lot, elaborate landscape, and all that that entails. And you can see there's room for little lawn, a couple of nice trees, people put shrubs around their uh, foundation, dress it up a little bit. That's what's very common, but occasionally somebody really does something creative and special with these little lots like this. And today we're going to go on a terrific garden tour of just such a place right now. Today we're at the home of Tony and Jeannie Herrera here in Green Hills in Nashville. And Tony, thanks so much for inviting us well, here. Excited that you're here, Marty. Tell me, how long have you been putting this wonderful yeah. garden together? Well, we actually started on this in 2000. and. Mm -hmm. uh, Probably about 60, 70% of it was uh, completed then, and it's just been kind of uh, add a few things here and there for, well, for the last several years. That's the way gardens uh, go. You're never uh, quite uh, finished, even when you think you are. Well, well, I can't wait for you to show us all the special things you've got, so why don't we just take a good gander at everything you've got going. I love the way you've got different textures and colors, shades of green all working together in this garden. It's really extraordinary. Well, we, we like a lot of different uh, plants and trees and shrubs. I'm real fond of the ornamentals and artsy pieces, and I like some of the southern classics uh, Jeannie does too, the azaleas mm -hmm. and uh, rhododendrons. and. Tony, one of the things I really love is that you've got these huge crepe myrtles in a relatively confined space, and they're completely working. They're not overcrowded. They're not, they're not too big. They look beautiful. You know, Marty, they get they get loved on, uh, <laughs> and they and they get manicured at the right time. And they're such a just a beautiful part of our whole landscaping scene here. They uh, are, and I got to say, loved is the right word. You have not done crepe murder on these. I can tell by the way they've been pruned. They've been correctly pruned, so that you can you get the full advantage of this gorgeous bark, which is just one of the great features of crepe myrtles. Well, they uh, they certainly complement uh, all of our landscaping. They do. Somehow you've managed to give yourselves a very private front entrance with this minuscule front yard, and it's by the clever planting of these large specimen evergreens. It's really lovely. You know, they, uh, they kind of maybe got a little bigger than I thought that they would, <laughs> but uh, they obviously love where they are, and uh, yeah. we love looking at them. I like the kind of northwest part. Yeah, this has uh, a kind of a... Portland, Oregon look to it, this well, Blue Atlas Cedar. Yeah. It does, and, and, and my daddy was from Colorado, or is from oh. Colorado, and so I kind of makes me think of that. And, and one of the things that first struck me when I walked in here was how you've solved the problem of having grass, if you will, in the shade, which is just about impossible for most people. And the way you've accomplished that is by having not true grass, but Mondo. Well, it's... Um, it was a real struggle. Uh, we tried hard to get the grass to grow, and it's obvious there's a lot of shade here, and mm -hmm. there was some excessive moisture, so. Yeah, uh, I can see it slopes yeah. down, yeah. We put the grass in two years ago. This is the second season, and we really like it. It has a flowing, yeah. it, uh, because it's longer, you don't mow it, it has that kind of river of soft grass look to yeah. it, rather than the cut velvet look of, yeah. of a normal lawn. Yeah. It's really mm. pleasing texture with mm. uh, with so many other things that you've got around. And of course, it leads us to this glorious Japanese maple that you've got here, which is beautifully pruned so you can really see the structure of the tree. And you say it's beautifully lit at uh, night. It, it looks wonderful at night. And uh, uh, an interesting thing about this tree, this was in the backyard. Oh. And so we thought, well, use it as a feature. And it's, uh, it's just adapted itself real well. And another thing I really noticed that I love that you don't see many people do is you used a hardy fern in a pot rather than a Boston or a Macho or Kimberly Queen um, up on your front porch, which is you used an autumn fern. Yeah, well, thanks for uh, noticing that. They have really had a great season growing this year. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, they have. It's uh, beautiful. We're coming into the backyard now. And Tony, this is just great. One thing I've noticed is that you know, landscape designers, and I am one, will tell people, oh, don't just plant one of anything. You've got to have masses to make an impact. But one thing your 
beautiful garden shows is that when you've got a small space and you're an inherent collector like you are, one of something makes a ton of sense. It just, everything stands out. And I know that you are a fan of conifers, I can tell. Well, that's certainly one of my favorites. I like the different shapes. I like the different bends. I like the different leaf structures, the different colors. Mm -hmm. and You're growing indica azaleas here. That's a Florida plant or South Alabama or whatever. And I guess it's because of the sheltered location or something? Well, they do real good. We, you know, kind of keep them trimmed just a little bit because mm -hmm. they do so good. But they, they get huge if you let them go. Well, yeah. I, you know, I, I've seen them in Florida and yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I've seen them, you know, six feet tall, seven feet tall. Uh, right. But those have a real, real pretty violet kind of an orchid bloom. Yeah, that, that, huge, yeah, huge that, flower. That, I think that one's Formosa. Yeah. I think that's the name of that. Big, see, I, go you, ahead. You keep teaching me. Uh, <laughs> I guess you could call this your red corner back here. No, it's, it's red. <laughs> that that hibiscus is awesome. Thank you. Th those those flowers have to be what nine inches across. Well, maybe? they're they're really big, and you know now that we've had a little bit of rain, they're they're often uh, firing again. Mm -hmm. um, oh, it's so. gorgeous. I'm not sure exactly what variety that is, but I suspect that it's Lord Baltimore. And that's what yeah. it looks a lot like. That is just a and really hardy. It comes back reliably every year. Uh, Blooms like clockwork. It does. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, about the time you think, well, I don't know, <laughs> all of a sudden here, yeah. here it comes. They're late and, to uh, sprout. Yeah, yeah. and it once was... it gets going, right. uh, you know, it'll, it'll keep blooming uh, all the way uh, through September. That's uh, awesome. Yeah. What a display. Yeah, it's pretty. It is. Yeah. And I yeah. have to say, your love of conifers obviously extends to container plants. Look at this thing. This is yeah. fabulous. That's a good one that lets me have a little bit of fun yeah. bending it and tying it up and uh, curling it. The weeping Atlas yeah. is really pretty. Pretty blue color. And, and uh, I love the, the little Calabracoa underneath it. That's really pretty. Yeah. Hey, I hear falling water. Yeah, we've got a nice little water feature back here to look at. Cool. Oh, but on the way, look at these incredible pom-poms. My gosh. You do this? Um, yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I, I've had a, uh, a part of the, of the shaping. Now, naturally, when, you know, when it went in, it had some shape to it. But mm -hmm. I've been able to, with a little bit of help, right. keep, it, keep it looking like you're seeing it now. Juniper uh, will really take a lot of shaping yeah. and still thrive. It's really remarkable. And I got to say, the startling, most startling thing of all in this backyard is this palm tree. Isn't that something? Yes. That um, palm tree, a hardy windmill palm. Once again, we're in Nashville. <laughs> uh, uh, you don't see palms. <laughs> well, that's been around 10 years. Wow. And Jeannie and I knew that it wouldn't have a chance of survival, but it was fun. It was obviously much, much smaller. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, it's hung in there. That uh, is beautiful. Th this has been an unbelievable year for it. Obviously, it's been so hot. and uh, Yeah, that's what uh, they like. Yeah, and it's just really, really, really grown this year. Well, it's uh, got to be, what, 12 feet tall? Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. huge. It's spectacular. It, it's, and what a nice counterpoint to this people pond. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, it's a nice spa. Yeah, um, that's delightful. Uh, it's comfortable. It, you know, we didn't want a great big pool. We wanted something that was big enough for Jeannie and I to float around in. And my buddy Lee Seelig at Waterscapes helped us with it. And oh, that's really Put beautiful. it in for us. It's just right mm. for your, your yeah. yard. You don't really have yeah. room for a huge pool. You'd sacrifice everything to put in a regular pool. These azaleas look great back here. Yeah. Thanks, Marty. They were kind of like the Japanese maple that we moved from the back to the front. These oh, yeah. were these were up front or uh -huh. out, out front. They didn't like where they were. They weren't happy, and so we moved them and got them back here in the shade. And they love it. A great Southern classic plant. Well, and it just shows. You know, you don't have to be afraid to move stuff around. If it's not happy where it is, try it mm. someplace else. Well, they've had some good success doing yeah. doing things like that. Yeah. Uh, we don't ever try to get rid of anything. And, yeah, uh, me neither. And you can see. We put it everywhere, so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. you know, all, all the hostas here, they came from out front. We mm -hmm. moved them, uh, you know, to the back back here. And, oh, it's lovely. Uh, yeah. It's very peaceful. Yeah. This is truly yeah. a lovely, lovely yard. Thank, I want to thank, thank you, you so much. Thanks, Marty. For thank giving you. us such a great tour. Thanks for helping me learn a little bit more about what oh, I've got back here. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah, yeah.